Yeah, so firstly, self-introduction. So I'm Zhixi Cai from uh, Monash University. So it's a university from Australia. Uh, we have a CVPR work uh, in this year. So here that uh, I come here to uh, share this work uh, to who is interested in that. Uh, so the firstly, the thank you for the invitation to this talk. So before everything started, so the first thing is that I need to introduce some backgrounds of our work, so which is about representation learning. So why, why do we need representation learning? So as you know, the, if you are modeling with some deep learning stuff, normally there we care about two things. So one is the performance like accuracy for classification or some uh, visual quality metrics for image generation, like uh, PSNR or SSIM. Another thing is, the efficiency, which is uh, training for uh, inference speed or memory consumption. Normally, these things are trade-off. For example, if you are using a large model, the performance is better, but efficiency is worse. If you are using a small model, the performance will drop, but the speed is fast. This thing also uh, reflects to some la large language model like GPT-3. So these GPT models are powerful and become the solid foundation of ChatGPT. However, it is very difficult to train. For example, the GPT-3 has 175 billion parameters and a very large, uh, large scale data set and a very, very long time to train. So it will cost about uh, 4.6 million US dollars. So for academic researchers in universities and uh, the people in startup companies, it has become very, very hard to train a model like that. So is there a better way to have both good performance or if any efficiency? One solution is that uh, using uh, pre-trained or pre-extracted features. Uh, for visual data, we can use some pre-trained models trained on ImageNet. So it's easily doable in some uh, in one line with Torch Vision. Uh, so like the uh, code like here, uh, it's pre-trained on ImageNet. So it, it uh, will cut the, la uh, the last layer and get some uh, seems not readable for human uh, of a, num uh, a sequence of numbers or a, a lot of numbers. But uh, in other, some other features, they might be meaningful. So for example, the open face, so it will extract the landmark locations of the face. And uh, um, or maybe the optical flow. So the optical flow represents the flow motion of the video. Uh, for the audio data, male spectrogram and MFCC uh, using fast Fourier transform are also very popular and become the foundation of the traditional uh, audio analysis. And it can turn the one-dimensional waveform audio to two-dimensional spectrograms. So you can deal with these audio-like images. So if you want to uh, some semantic features, you can also try some deep learning based uh, wave to web family features. If you want to non-semantic features, uh, trail features from Google is a, also a good solution. In the uh, first ICLR conference, the Godfather said, learning representations of the data that make it easier to extract useful information when building classifiers or other predictors. As you know, the success of the machine learning models relies on the choice of features. So that is what the representation learning care about. So it's about domain, uh, it's the, this domain discussing about how to get a good feature extractor. To build a good feature extractor, we can use the, uh, the supervisor banner, like uh, some model pre-trained on ImageNet for image or kinetics data set for video. But for the uh, supervised learning that requires a large scale data set with labels, Labels are expensive. So people turn to the unsupervised learning like auto encoder to reconstruct the input data and the self-supervised learning like some um, important works uh, such as SimCLR using contrastive learning or masked auto encoder using ma masking mechanism. The main idea is when we train the model, we don't start with the label data because it's too expensive. Instead, we use self-supervised learning to train the model parameters from scratch to a preliminary level, and then for, from the preliminary battle, uh, level to a, form, a fully formed level. These are two different stages. The first stage is what we call pre-training, uh, visual uh, representation. 
during the pre-training, the model parameters are trained from the scratch to the to, to that one to the preliminary level using an unlabeled data set. The unlabeled data set is cheap and uh, it can be scored, uh, I mean collected from online and uh, uh, it can be very large scale. Once the parameters are trained to the reasonable level, we can then use the label data. I mean, it might not be a very large scale because it's domain specific to fine tune the model for the some downstream tasks. So at this stage, we don't need a lot of label data because the parameters has already been trained to a good level in the first stage. This first stage doesn't involve any specific tasks. So it's just a pre-training with a bunch of uh, unlabeled data. The second stage is what we fine tune the model with label data specific to the task. And that's the main idea of the representation learning about the pre-training and the fine tuning. So one uh, important work in this domain is about the uh, mask auto encoder. So the main concept is that masking random patches of the input image and then reconstructing them. Reconstructing them. So it's based on two ideas. Uh, so the first idea is that masking a uh, mask auto encoder or MAE come up with an encoder decoder architecture where one encoder only operates on visible patches, subsets of the image. And then the simple decoder can reconstruct the original image from the latent representation of the visible parts. The second idea is that if the uh, masking ratio is very high, for example, 75%, it will produce a reasonable and uh, meaningful self-supervised tasks. So by combining the two designs, we can efficiently train the large models, increasing the training speed by three times or more while improving the accuracy. So there are some uh, architecture details uh, for this MAE. So not, uh, they are using the VIT-based architecture because the VIT that extracts the sequence, uh, the tokenize the, uh, the patches of the image as the items in the sequence. And as you, as you know that the uh, masking autoencoder that masking the uh, some uh, sequence, uh, some items, some tokens and uh, uh, reconstruct uh, from the visible one. So uh, this architecture that uh, perfectly fits the requirements. And normally the encoder is larger than the decoder because the decoder is what we don't want. We, we only need the encoder for the uh, extracted features. The loss function is the MSE between the hidden tokens and the reconstructed tokens. So it's only happen on the uh, hidden tokens. So they proposed the uh, experiments for ImageNet. So the uh, scratch original is the original BIT large results. And the baseline MAE and the scratch, our implementation is the uh, results that are trained by the authors. So you can see it's actually a lot of improvements. As the, uh, they also discuss about the masking ratio. So as they said, it's 75%, which is a very high uh, masking ratio. So if you know some uh, representation learning tasks like uh, in painting, so it's not uh, such large. So that, that's interesting. And they also discuss about different masking strategy. So they found the different, uh, they have the random masking that which is totally random. The block masking is the masking tokens are, uh, uh, are together. And the green masking is some something like grid. So you can see the random masking is the best. So another work is about uh, video MAE. The video MAE, uh, so you know that from the name, it's applying MAE on video. The architecture is very similar. The, the main difference is that they are using the, they are tokenized the uh, input video as the cubes, not the patches. The patches is a, a small uh, a small image from the original one. The small patch is 16 by 16 2D image. But for this uh, video MAE, they are using the cubes, which is two by 16 by 16. So it, it contains some temporal information inside. They also did some uh, experiments on something, something V2 uh, data sets. Uh, it's a very large scale data and uh, they use uh, 64 uh, GPUs to pre-train that. So you can see from the results, the video MAE also uh, beat the previous works and in a, with some gap. Uh, they also discuss about uh, some uh, masking strategy and uh, you can see the, uh, 
there there are because the for the video representation learning the there are one more dimension so which is a temporal so for the image they are only height and width so which are spatial and the plus this one this is a dimension uh, this is temporal so with these three uh, dimensions so there are four types of masking strategy they know so which is uh, totally random tube masking frame masking and block masking so you can see the uh, how this masking uh, visualized in this figure uh, from the results they think the tube masking is the best so which for our um, um, proposed methods and in and in the later part that we will discuss so the idea is that they hope they think can uh, these two masking can avoid the information leakage and we will discuss that later uh, the masking ratio they also uh, did application studies and they found the 90 percent is the best so this uh, this masking ratio is higher uh, than the uh, original uh, image based uh, image based uh, mae which is 75 percent so in my personal idea understanding it might be the uh, because the input is 16 frames and uh, the uh, using this uh, uh, even 90 percent of the hidden ratio uh, here uh, of marketing ratio there are still a lot of visible uh, tokens there and the models can also learn something from there so that's the background uh, from this part now in this stage that let me introduce the latest work published on uh, on cvpr uh, martin mask auto encoder for facial video representation learning. So the authors are listed here. I'm the first author as the PhD student. Uh, this work is built based on the MAE and the video MAE, which we discussed before. So our work is related to these works and make Martin as an advanced high performance model for extracting useful features from in the wild video, uh, facial video. We are looking, uh, we are working on several facial related tasks like uh, effective computing including the emotion or sentiment predictions and the effect generation and the detections in the previous so we are thinking that if there is some good feature extractors is uh, specialized for the facial video that will be great so for Martin, we focus on this uh, facial video data with some smaller data uh, data set the model can be adapted to some facial related tasks uh, like a uh, facial uh, attribute recognition, expression recognition, something like that. So this figure uh, introduced the overview of this idea and the trained encoder can be used to extract features uh, for any in the wild facial video and used for downstream tasks, for example, defect generation and detection. Uh, here is the pipeline for Marlin. Uh, you can see there are three parts inside, which are representation learning for pre-training the module, the facial uh, region guided to masking, we call it fasking, as the novel masking strategy for better representation learning for facial video and the downstream adaptations for transfer learning. So the main contributions of our works are, so firstly that we introduced the marking as the uh, good facial encoders trained on a self-supervised manner. The secondly, we introduced the novelty uh, facial region guided to masking strategy. And we also demonstrate the generalization performance of Marlin in several different downstream tasks and also tested in few shop settings. Let's see uh, Marlin starting from the pre-training uh, pre process. Uh, we firstly track the facial region by a pre-trained facial detector from in the wild video. And then we randomly uh, sample the clips, uh, 16 frame clips from that. So we get a video clip as the standard input of this model, so which is 16 frames. The VIT architecture will patch in this input into queues. We follow it, we follow the previous works to use two by 16 by 16 as the dimension of these queues. For Marlin, we introduce the novel fasting strategy to make the to mask the tokens, and I will talk about that later. Then after this masking, we split the visible tokens and the hidden tokens. The visible tokens are these green tokens and the uh, hidden tokens are these red tokens. So you can see this uh, in, in the figure. The visible tokens are used to reconstruct the unseen hidden tokens and uh, we can use it to train the mask masked autoencoder with the reconstruction loss. Besides the reconstruction loss, we use adversarial loss like training gains 
This, the reason for that is from the previous work, it is mentioned that the better generation quality can lead a better, uh, better features for representative learning. So with these two losses, we can do a pre-training from unlabeled data. So here is the details of the second part of this work, the facial region guided to masking. So we call it the fasting. Uh, firstly, we left the, each frame of the cubes into the face parser. So for example, if the cube temporal uh, size is two, we let the first, the third, and the fifth, and so on frames into the face parser to get the segments information, uh, which contains the, the uh, nose, left eye, right eye, mouth, hair, skin. So for each video, uh, we firstly random uh, sample a permutation, and then uh, this will be the priority to choose which cubes are masked. So as you can see, the first frames of cubes is ordered by this priority, and then we mask the patches with the chosen masking uh, ratio, the, the chosen masking ratio, iterating the the frames in the video so we can get the video that some specific components are masked. And this location is tracked because we have segmentation information for each frame. So in other words that, uh, for example, if we want a video that uh, we want to see the, the eye, maybe the background and uh, maybe just a left eye. So this system can, this masking system can only uh, make these parts visible to the model no matter how the uh, in the temporal access uh, axis so this is uh based on this phase parser so it can the the eye can be tracked and uh only uh accessible by the models so in the previous work uh the pre the state of art masking strategy is the tube masking for video the reason of the tube masking works is that uh, the mae is designed to let the autoencoder reconstruct the unseen part as the challenging part. But if the data is a video, the hidden information might be seen across the temporal axis. So in the other words, for example, in the first, the, in the first uh, frame, so you can see my face, but in the second frame, the it is a mask, but it doesn't make sense because the model has already got the information from the first frame, no matter the second frame is masked. Uh, based on this idea, so they, they think uh, they use, they found the, the Q masking is the best because it's only uh, masked uh, randomly choose by the first frame and it will keep the masking uh, on the temporal axis. So it's like a, it's like straight tubes. They think it will prevent information leak. So basically we share the same idea of two masking. They assume the objects in the video will not change in the spatial location too much as the two masking will prevent the information leak. Uh, so here that we are targeting the facial data because it is only for the facial data. So we, are, we assume that the components in the face, like uh, the eyes, the nose, they are the important information. So we can use more specific tools to avoid the information leak. So we use this face parser to track the locations of these uh, uh, face components. The last part is the downstream adaptation. We use the face uh, detections and a sliding window to get a facial video clips from any in the wild video input. So we will forward the encoder multiple times from a sliding window and get the latent representations for each video clip. Uh, each frame in is 2D matrix, which is a 1D vector for each token. So you can, so here that you, you can have a lot of video clips in the temporal dimensions. So the, this matrix will be stacked as 3D matrix. Uh, as we get the features, we have three ways uh, to do the adaptation. One is fine tuning the encoder and the classifier head. Another way is uh, freezing the encoder and only train the classifier. And which means that we firstly extracted features and then save it, uh, save as a numpy file and then use these extracted features to do the some training. The third way is replacing the encoders of some method with Mali encoder and then fine tune it. The, the downstream tasks can be emotion sentiment prediction, uh, facial attribute prediction, defect detection, uh, lip synchronizations, and other tasks. So in this paper, we pre-trained our model in YouTube face dataset, and we add a linear layer for evaluating the model with these two models, uh, with the, these three models for classifications. Uh, which is the linear probing and the fine tuning and replacing the encoder for the generation. Uh, the linear probing, um, yeah, that's all. 
I, I think that I think that's it. So the we pre-trained that we're using two a one hundred GPUs for uh, about a one, about a one week. Uh, firstly, that uh, here are some results for DFA detection. So we evaluate the modeling with the previous works. Uh, here uh, we fine tune that on Face Francis plus plus dataset, uh, which is one uh, DFA dataset for base swapping. And the result shows that our approach is uh, better than video MAE and also uh, is compatible with some advanced uh, supervised method, F3Net and the M2TM. Uh, currently, that, uh, we also did some experiments that are using Martin to train a multimodal temporal localizations for the fix on LoveDF Love dataset, which is our previous work in the last year. So these experiments are from that paper shown below. So here that we freeze the encoder and only train from the features. And here the table E to E means the training end to end with the encoder from raw data. This encoder as the baseline is the MVIT V2 base model, which is the state of art video classification approach. So you can see even Martin with the VIT small architecture encoder can generate the comparable scores in both AP and AR. I3D is another strong feature for uh, video embedding, but uh, the scores are not good. The 3D MM features is a classic uh, traditional computer vision for facial information encoding, So, but it totally doesn't work. Uh, not, on, not only detection, even for the deepfake generation as the uh, video generation task, money also works. So in this work, we use money to enhance the wave to live for better performance by replacing the encoder as Mali encoder. Uh, from the previous uh, literature, the wave to lip has a very good lip sync scores, but a very bad on generation uh, visual quality. So we've evaluated in uh, LRS2 dataset. So here that you can see the uh, from the FID metrics, it's uh, usually uh, normally used for evaluating the generation quality has a better better result compared with the video MAE and the attend wave to lip. As, as for the lip scores, it also doesn't drop too much. We also visualize the generation output here. So you can see the vanilla wave to lip will fail in some scenarios when the speaker is not in front of you. So it can uh, generate some artifacts like uh, double lips in the red border image, but the Marlin enhancer version has solved this problem. Uh, it can, Marlin can also use the for other facial related tasks as a universal feature extractor. So we also evaluated for sentiment and emotion prediction, which is very important effective analysis task. So we have evaluate on CMU MOSI dataset. Uh, it is a multi-model dataset, including the language text, uh, language audio and visual. So you can, you can see LAV here. Uh, our approach as a visual only unimodal approach also get a comparable result with the state-of-art methods for using three modalities for emotion. And also it beats some supervised methods uh, in sentiment. Uh, we also evaluated for facial attribute of recognition on set up a VHQ dataset. So you can see the uh, from the uh, visualization, uh, we run GradCam to check where the model will focus on for the facial attribute recognition. So you can see the models can, uh, the model can capture the correct positions for these prediction results. Marlin is also suitable for future learning. So if you, do, if you don't have a lot of data, uh, here is some results for using small proportions of training data. And you can see the results doesn't drop too much. Uh, you, even we only use 10% or even 1% of training data. Uh, to choose the best architecture for Marlin, we also run a lot of ablation studies. So here is the results for choosing the optimal masking ratio. From the ex experiments, the 90% is the best, which is the uh, same idea of the previous works. Apart from that, we also did ablations for different module contributions, encode architectures, and the masking strategies. But uh, due to the uh, time limits that I will uh, skip that, so you can check the details in the paper. Uh, the one thing that I need to mention is that uh, the code is published on GitHub and uh, everyone can access and uh, easily use the library Marlin, Marlin PyTorch to do the feature extractions. So now that we have three models, that uh, which is a VIT small base and a VIT large, the pre-trained on uh, YouTube based dataset, uh, which is also used for the paper. Uh, so the way to use that is also very easy. So firstly, that uh, you can just simply install the Marlin PyTorch library from uh, PyPI, and then model equal 
a mining dot from online to load the model from online. So it will download the checkpoint and load that. And then uh, you can use model dot extract video to get the uh, the features like that. So it will uh, you can also uh, set crop crop face equals to true, so it can be used to process the in the wild video. And uh, uh, after that, you will get the uh, uh, results uh, T K is uh, I mean N. So so they, we, this is the shape of this three D matrix, which is about the number of the sliding window, the size of the uh, uh, the the size of the sequence, and also the dimension of the embeddings. So after that, you can use this. Uh, these features to do anything you want. You can also load this mo module for training, for fine tuning, or for fine tuning, or e or just uh, use that for uh, uh, linear probing. That's also uh, that's all good. And uh, yeah, and uh, that's it. So here is the contact of uh, the authors, and you can scan the QR code for the for our paper and the GitHub repository. So that's all. Thank you.